Mystery or magic? After finishing the first episode of the council, something has got me thinking. Is there something supernatural at play here? I know what you're thinking. What would magic be doing in a game like this? I mean, it just seems like gossip and political affairs, right? But what if Mortimer's project was a way to connect to another world? Like, say, become immortal? I know this is a long shot, but hear me out. During episode 1, The Mad Ones, we discover that Louis's mother was invited to a secluded island owned by the Lord Mortimer. Only highly esteemed guests, political figures, powerful people, or close friends were welcome to this island. Knowing Sarah was the leader of the Golden Order, it would make sense for her to be there. But when we learn that she actually escaped the manor and is currently hiding out on the island, this is where my suspicion starts. Once Louis starts searching for clues and follows the messages his mother left for him, he is then brought to a secret room where Emily also happens to be. There they find a hidden collection of pieces which Lord Mortimer, nor anyone during that time should own. As Louis said, it's nearly impossible for a person to own said pieces as they are very old and very hard to acquire even with powerful connections. So what was Sarah looking for? For Lord Mortimer's riches? No. When Louis searches the room with Emily, they both find a bunch of documents that have Lord Mortimer's signatures on them. And the documents go back way over 600 years old. Way beyond an average person's life. Obviously, it's downright impossible that someone can live over 600 years old and to own multiple properties over the centuries, but could this be what Sarah was looking for? The game prompts options on what to say to Emily. Two piqued my interest. One, multiple Mortimers, and two, Mortimer is immortal. Now, the most logical assumption is that Mortimer is actually a title and not a person. It would make sense due to the fact that Mortimer acquired a lot of historical art pieces throughout this manor and the contents within the hidden room, but how long has Mortimer been around? And if Mortimer is a title, does anyone else know that there were multiple Mortimers? This opens the discussion that maybe Mortimer is actually immortal. Not physically, but more metaphorically, in a more paranormal way. Stepping back a bit, let's take a look at another character who is connected to the paranormal, Elizabeth Adams. We learned that Elizabeth was on the island as a way to heal and to relax due to her mental illnesses with bipolar and anxiety disorders. In her biography, it is said that Elizabeth's family is very close with Mortimer and home. You can quickly catch on that there is something going on with Elizabeth. If you choose to join home and Piaggi for dinner, Elizabeth has a reaction the moment Sarah's name is spoken out loud. I honestly can't imagine her in the conflict with the famous Sara de Ricci. <laughs> no! <laughs> Elizabeth! After home sees that she is taken back to her room, Piaggi makes a comment about her, saying, You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? I segni della bestia. And in English, that translates to the signs of the beast. Further on in the episode, you are given an option to go through her room just before a big dinner with all the guests. Once inside, Louise greeted by a shocking scene of a destroyed room. Symbols all over the walls, candles, books, and personal belongings scattered everywhere, along with a giant pentagram in the middle of the room. These symbols are also tattooed all over Elizabeth's body. Near the end of the episode, after leaving the secret room with Emily, Elizabeth comes chasing after Louis and begging him for help. If you choose to help Elizabeth, she tells Louis that she saw his mother a few days ago. Sure, Elizabeth could be drunk out of her mind, but you can catch on there's some truth to what she is saying. She doesn't hesitate or stumble over her words, the same way she describes Sarah to be an evil person back when Louis ran into her on his way to dinner. She tells Louis that Sarah was always trying to get rid of her ailments, but the voices in her head still remain. And yes, this could be talks of a drunken, possibly schizophrenic person, but what if the voices in her head were actually more than that? What if the voices in her head were actual people from the other side? When Elizabeth describes how she saw Sarah, she was dead set on telling Louis that he doesn't understand that she is here. You don't understand. It's her. She's here. Yes, I understand. No, you're not listening. The moment I saw her, I was overcome by spasms. She's here. I'm telling you, it was her. Which makes me question why she would say it like that. From what we've learned, Elizabeth's experiments were done by Sarah and were described as gruesome and horrible, which can also be confirmed by Washington. As it was believed she was possessed by a demon as her mother was experiencing similar symptoms when she was pregnant with her. Elizabeth describes her condition as one thing Sarah couldn't cure. 
As Elizabeth suspects, her stay on the island was a trap to lure her back into the hands of the Golden Order. And she was right, Mortimer and Holmes conspired together to have her be on the island, the same time as Sarah. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. So what exactly would Mortimer need Elizabeth for? Before I continue, let's take a look at the history of the Golden Order itself and how it compares to real-life organizations. There are two real-life organizations that seem similar to what the Golden Order does, such as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The Golden Dawn was an organization that dealt with metaphysics and paranormal activities during the late 19th century and early 20th century. One particular part I found interesting was the Secret Chiefs. Secret Chiefs are transcendent cosmic authorities that exist on a higher plane, or of incarnation. They were considered to be authorities over any magical order. Another real-life organization that closely relates to the Golden Order is the Illuminati. The Illuminati is a secret organization that was founded in the late 18th century. They were opposed superstition, obscurism, religious influence, and abuses of state power. Oftentimes, they were apparently conspiring to gain control of the world affairs to establish a new world order. Kinda like what Mortimer said in his letter to Napoleon, right? My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the High Society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. Sarah came to this island for our project with Mortimer, and as I mentioned earlier, it seems that Mortimer has been planning something big all this time. If my assumption was correct and Elizabeth has been visiting Mortimer multiple times, then it makes me believe Mortimer has run some experiments on her himself. While Sarah's tactics were more to stop Elizabeth from experiencing such feats, then maybe Mortimer has been testing how far Elizabeth's reach to the other side is. St. Francis of Assisi in ecstasy before superior voices. The conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio. It's incredible. It doesn't look like a copy, but I was sure the original was in Rome. Maybe the reason why Mortimer has all these historical pieces of art and treasure was because he was able to find them through Elizabeth? Seeking out the spirits to talk to them or see through their eyes. Kind of like the Animus from Assassin's Creed. William Mortimer is known for his masterful ways of being a businessman. He already has powerful allies. He can persuade anyone to do his bidding, and maybe he just did that with Elizabeth. Elizabeth is mentally and physically scared of Sarah, but she seems to be more at ease since she knows Mortimer in home. No one discouraged her from drawing symbols all over her walls. Maybe Mortimer's own experiments with Elizabeth is to encourage her to talk with these spirits or entities? To encourage a connection to the other side for him to use? But maybe the reason why she's back this time is to go a step further than that. So this brings me to my next point. How exactly does Elizabeth make contact? Elizabeth has multiple symbols all over her body and even drawn on her room. Each symbol has a different representation and meaning in different religions and cultures. A lot of the symbols shown in her room and on her body are often used in different practices and even spells. Here are a few that I can make out clearly. The pentacle, or pentagram. Elizabeth has multiple pentagram tattoos on her body, also drawn all along her walls and floors. She even has a huge one set up on the ceiling with rope. People often associate the pentagram with demonic intention, but the origin of it is actually quite the opposite. Pentagram, in rooted Greek words, means five and line. The Greeks believed it illustrated the five elements that is present in every human with earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. The pentagram is actually a symbol that was used to protect against evil. An open pentagram was meant for the protection of a conflict while a closed one with a circle is to contain and protect. The circle symbolizes eternity, infinity, and cycles of life. In witchcraft, a circle pentagram is implying a spiritual containment. Triple Goddesses 
Describe as three female figures, the maiden, the mother, and the crone, each symbolizes the female life cycle, the phases of the moon, cycle of birth, and also the realms of the earth, underworld, and heavens. The Eye of Horus, the ancient Egyptian symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. Horn God, male counterpart to the triple goddess. It represents nature, wilderness, sexuality, hunting, and life cycles. Eye of Providence, also known as the all-seeing eye of God, symbolizes the eye of God watching over humanity. Luxar, Apparently this is a symbol for the Hermetic Brotherhood of Luxor, a cultic organization from the 19th century. Magic Circle There is a large tattoo on Elizabeth's chest and possibly resembles a magic circle, which is used in magic rituals. It is believed to form a sacred place to provide magical protection. Sulfur Also known as Leviathan's Cross, a symbol for the element sulfur that spiritually compares to a human soul. It also symbolizes protection and balance between people. The Siglium Day. This was a magical diagram from the late Middle Ages and labeled as God and his angels. It was believed to allow the user to have power over all creatures except archangels. And finally, the Icelandic magic symbols. These symbols were mostly found all over Elizabeth's room. These symbols were Icelandic magical stabs or sigils that date back to the 17th century. These were typically used by farmers who had to deal with harsh climatic conditions. Here are a few more that match what we see in Elizabeth's room. Vegvisir, also known as the Icelandic signpost or wayfinder. That is meant to help to find the bear find their way through rough weather. Helm of Awe, also known as Helm of Terror, the symbol represents strength in battle. It is also said to provide protection mentally, spiritually, and physically. Nabrakarstafur, a style used when making necropants, a pair of pants made from the skin of a dead man that are capable of producing an endless supply of money. Stafur to au... Ooh? Au... Vika Updraug, oh my god, I'm so sorry that I probably said all of that wrong, is meant to invoke ghosts or evil spirits. Now, I understand this episode had multiple endings, but for the sake of this theory, we're going to relate this to Help Elizabeth endings, since there are more evidence to back up my crazy thoughts. Elizabeth seems to be very encouraged to talk to these voices or even listen to them. Louis is only given a chance to hear how Elizabeth found his mother only if he drinks with her. And as we all know, it was laced with laudamin. Laudamin is a tincture of opium. During this time, especially in Victorian Britain, there was an outbreak of opium use, which then led to opium dens. There were many patrons that would smoke and take drugs. The most popular preparation was laudamin, which is an alcoholic herbal mixture which contains opium. And at this time, laudamin was used as a painkiller or relaxant to cure all ailments, including for young children and infants. After Louis starts to feel faint, Elizabeth tells him that she's surprised he liked it and that her guests normally don't enjoy it giving me the impression this isn't the first time she lured someone into her room like this because by the time the laudamin takes into effect, it seems like she forgot about Sarah, and she only said she was here to make Louis come with her and sink to the bottom together. You like my little concoction, don't you? That's rare. What? It no longer has any effect on me, but my guests generally don't appreciate me mixing alcohol with laudanum. What? You put laudanum in my drink? In both. Don't worry, my little Louie. We'll sink down to the bottom together. She also said the laudanum doesn't affect her anymore since she has been drinking it regularly for so long. And if you told her to escape the island, just before Louie passes out, we see Elizabeth standing over him with the knife in her hand. Oh, little Louie's tired. Leave everything to me. If this is another one of Mortimer's experiments, then it's most likely that Elizabeth may be conducting a sacrifice to gain a connection with a spirit, or to see how far these voices will make her do things. So why let Elizabeth do this? It's clearly obvious she's unstable with her mental disorders and actually needs help, but why would Mortimer risk it? Just so he can use the spirits to find more riches? Or could he be searching for contact with a higher authority? Something like a secret chief, perhaps? Maybe this is how Mortimer will achieve immortality, by unlocking the secrets of the unknown, to see what will happen beyond life and death. 
these secret organizations are always looking to go beyond, to uncover what we can't understand. Perhaps it's why Sarah wants Louis to take over the Order? Not only because he's her son, but because of his own ability to see the future. This party is a trap to lure more important people under the same roof. They are all needed to play a role, like a piece on a chessboard. Since there are multiple endings and choices, it's not exactly known why Mortimer called all of them there, but the fact that Sarah escaped and is hiding out on the island is not a good sign. Even according to Louis' vision, there is something going on here that the other guests aren't fully aware of, and Mortimer holds all the pieces of the puzzle. The secrets and experiments are dangerous and could lead to something far worse. Let's hope Louis can actually figure this out. Saint Jerome and the Angel. Yet again, art with political undertones with an image of a saint hearing voices. Yeah, just shove it in your pants, it's fine. <laughs> Manuscripts. Manuscripts allow you to educate yourself during the adventure. At the start of each quest you word or develop another character, video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4. 